to inform the coroner's office and the police. So don't move him. Right, sir. The plan will be here in a couple of minutes, sir. Right. Now, how did it happen? Well? Well, I, I was just fooling in it when up. Is your rifle, Brady? Yes, sir. Why was it loaded, Brady? I don't know, Sergeant. I, I thought it was empty. You didn't check it to see it was safe? Excuse me, Sergeant. I've been checked at the loading bay. Who was in charge there? Sergeant Miller. He was with us all day, too. Carry on. Well, Tom? Well, sir, it seems that Brady and Lewis were fooling around. It, it was an accident, sir. Lewis was a mate of mine. I, I... Pull yourself together, Brady. Were you alone with Lewis? No, sir. Hinch and Thompson were here. Well, did Brady say, sir, an accident? That's true, sir. Were you fooling about with live ammunition? No, sir. We'd, we'd handed it all back. Well, how did a live round come to be in your rifle? Had you checked it? No, sir. Oh, thank God, sir. Excuse me, sir. Sergeant Miller checked our rifles. Then we cleaned them and checked them when we got back here. Have you all cleaned your rifles? Well? No, sir, I, I didn't. Mm. Mm. Sergeant Gates, I'm off to see the accident. Have Sergeant Miller and these three men standing by. Right, sir. And you, sort yourself out, Brady. What's the matter with you, Bob? Didn't any of your training sink in? Right, come and get your ammunition. I'd just like to say a few words before we start zeroing. Okay. This zeroing practice will be the last opportunity that you will have for using live ammunition before we move. Make sure your weapon handling is correct, and for heaven's sake, remember these safety precautions. We don't want any mistakes. Remember, the next opportunity that you'll have for using live ammunition will be under stress. So think. Don't panic. Right, any questions? Will we do any training under the same sort of conditions that we might find abroad? We'll try to simulate the same sort of conditions, yes. Will tomorrow's night's exercise be realistic, sir? As far as possible. Uh, any more questions? Right, that's all, sir. Thank you, sir. Any more ammunition? Yes, sir. All right, uh, cover up your targets. Remember the load. Remember to check your safety catch. Magazine of five rounds. Load!
Line position. Out. Ready. Test and adjust your position. Anyone not ready? Five rounds grouping in your own time. Carry on. Anyone not finished? Hello. Well, let's see if we can always be this good. If we're not, someone's going to get hurt. Everyone got their blank ammunition. Okay, jump up now. Hold on! You were clearly told to move the safety catch to S, remove the magazine, then cock the weapon! I wondered how long it'd take you lot to get overconfident and sloppy. Fortunately, this time, no one got hurt. Next time, you might not be so lucky. Now, listen to me, all of you. Monday, we're off. We'll be in this sort of situation for real. None of you make believe, so concentrate. Even the best of us makes mistakes, you know. It's no use us drumming discipline into you if you won't discipline yourselves. We can only do so much. The rest is up to you. And there won't always be someone around to check your every movement, you know. Then you'll have to check for yourselves. So check properly. Check. That's all right. I've just got one more thing to say. From now on, it's going to be live ammunition that you are using, not blank. Your life, my life, our lives could be in your hands. Right, off you go. So what went wrong? Well, I'm not sure, sir. Sergeant Miller, I want you to go through the events of the day to see if we can find out what went wrong and see where the blame, if any, lies. Yes, sir. We were called out at 10 hundred hours. <laughs> Things was very quiet for us, sir, and, and then we were ordered back to base. Nope. We'd hardly been back an hour, sir, when we were ordered out again. We were ordered to a trouble area. I gave the order to load. We could hear quite a racket going on about two blocks away. Then suddenly all went quiet. We were ordered back to base. Then I gave the order to unload. Get a move on. This sort of thing went on for most of the day. One minute it was quiet, and the next minute all hell broke loose. We were patrolling a trouble area. I'd given the order to load. Then we had a spot of bother. A child ran across the road right in front of the lorry. 
said, eh? That's it. That's what, Brady? When the order ready was given. Is that right, Tom Miller? No, sir. But I heard it, sir. I gave no order, sir. Excuse me, sir. Yes, Hinch. I heard Sergeant Miller shout, steady, sir. Perhaps that's what Brady heard and thought it was the order ready, sir. Well, Tom Miller, is that so? That's right, sir. I shouted at the driver, steady on. Well, Brady? I don't know, sir. I, I thought it was the order. I, I must have panicked. I would like to point out, sir, we have been on duty ten hours. That's no excuse, Sergeant. Uh, no, sir. Uh, well, sir, we patrolled the area for about another hour, and then we was ordered back to base. Come on, let's have it, lad! Right, fall in three ranks. Brady, get the sesh off the portal and put it in the hood. Right. Carry on, Tom Miller. Unload. I gave the order to unload. Did you unload, Brady? Yes, sir. Are you sure? Uh. Well, Brady? Yes, sir, I am sure. Place your magazines in this box. Thompson, be careful. We're all tired, you know. Go on, please. What happened then, Sergeant? We went through the unloading bay, sir. So, in fact, your rifle wasn't cleared by Sergeant Miller? No, sir. Ted, though, the number one bull merchant. <laughs> Can we better do that, Sure. Don't take a minute. Only my own mum did see me now. <laughs> Energetic, you can take mine. <laughs> we checked it. What do you want? Blood? I checked it and cleaned it. <laughs> in for a penny, in for a pound, you're right, Jim. Have you cleaned it? No, I'm too tired. I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. Well, give me your rifle. I've got to get them locked up. You want it? You take it. <laughs> oh, look, look, stop messing about. So who would you say was to blame? Well? Well? Well, it certainly wasn't my fault. No. Poor Brady. I suppose he'd be sent back to England now. Yeah, poor old Brady. It had to be him. He's only an office clerk. What does he know about rifles? As much as you, me, Lewis. The adjutant was right. We're all to blame in one way or the other. Brady, because he was in a panic, didn't think or check, and didn't bother afterwards because he was tired. The Lance Corporal for calling Brady out of line, not reminding him to go and clear his weapon. The sentry for not making sure all the rifles had been checked. Even Sergeant Miller, he didn't bother to check. And it's his responsibility more than anybody else. And even Lewis, who always checked, made the mistake of fooling around with Brady. Yeah, well, I got the impression the adjutant was trying to blame me. 
Look how he had me doing all that loading and unloading drill. Only to prove a point. Well, you handed back the rifle, you left the safety catch on, you missed it. Well, I was nervous, wasn't I? Oh, no, Pete, your face gave you away. You were so confident, you were too confident. You forgot it. Look! I didn't kill Lewis. I don't feel in the least bit guilty. Well, I do. Ted checked my rifle and he checked yours. I cleaned it, it was clear. So had I, but he still checked them. Our rifles are our responsibility. Cleaning them, checking them, it goes with the job. And if you don't do it properly, someone's liable to get hurt. Ted was the only one who thought about it. And he was just as tired as we were, but he still did his job. Yeah, well, he got careless, didn't he? Because we didn't do our job. If we had, we'd been trained, all of us. Ted might still be alive. I have here a letter. I would like to read it to you. It concerns us all. Dear Major Johnson, I would like to thank you and the men of my son's regiment for the flowers and the generous gift of money. We buried my son yesterday. Your wreath was so beautiful, and the money you sent is going towards a headstone, just a plain one. He was a good boy, and we will miss him. But we must go on living. I had a letter from Ted's friend, Jim Brady, telling me how it happened. Please assure the men I blame no one, but please tell them to take care. Don't let what happened to him happen to them. Let his accident be the last of its kind. Thank you all once again for all your kind thoughts. Sincerely, Mrs. Thelma Lewis. I would like to be able to write to Mrs. Lewis and tell her that her son was the last. Unfortunately, I can't. Since he was shot, we've had another incident involving a civilian this time. Each and every one of you has been trained in the correct manner of loading and unloading your weapons. Lewis knew and checked, but he died because someone else didn't. They were negligent. It's up to every individual to check. That means you, 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 and me, all of us without exception. Check, or we'll have many, many more Ted Lewises. The next one might be you. Check. 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 